Hello and welcome to the Phase 2 Parent Class Section 3. As talked about already in previous sections, um, one of the things that's an issue for people with substance use issues is affect regulation. People do use drugs to soothe emotional states, to soothe boredom, to soothe anxiety, to soothe frustration, depression, and sometimes even to soothe happiness and, and um, more positive emotional states. So we're working with your child to help them build their capacity for affect regulation. This is also an area where you can help them in their recovery as well by working on examining how it is that you cope with emotions. Do you overreact and, and react um, or do you suppress and avoid? Because those two extremes are common for people with um, substance use issues and we're actually wanting to help them to not overreact or to just stuff and avoid or helping them to get into the window of tolerance. <clears throat> so this is an area I think where parents can have some power and some empowerment to take a look at how do they role model emotional coping uh, in their relationship to their child? Do we react, which is on top of the window of tolerance, or do we suppress and avoid, which is below the window of tolerance? Um, you know, and none of us are perfect, and we all probably struggle to some degree with <laughs> coping with unpleasant emotional states. Um, there's a lot of um, ways to look at that most behaviors are uh, around negotiating emotional states to either avoid one state or to create another. Um, so a lot of times we'll have young people that are pretty suppressed and disconnected and avoidant of, um, of, of connecting to their emotions and, and expressing their emotions. They're certainly disconnected from wanting, wanting to experience their emotions. Oftentimes, as therapy progress and they get more connected, we, we ask them to share with their family, you know, what's going on for them and their relationship to their, to their family. And sometimes they really struggle with knowing how to communicate what they feel in a healthy, assertive way with others. So oftentimes, in the beginning, they'll go from a suppressed place to then an overreacting place. So they'll come home and share with mom or dad and talk about, you know, hey, mom, for the last, you know, I don't know, month, you've been doing this to me or dad, you've been doing that. And, and they express it in a way that's really kind of angry and elicits defensiveness on your part and that sort of thing. And it can be very frustrating for you, of course, and probably for them as well. So what we're then doing is, is actually in that experience of taking a suppressed kid and who's now showing up to the relationship but kind of overshooting it, the window of tolerance, we're then working with them to kind of honor them for actually showing up to the relationship, sharing their truth, and then helping them to work on how to be assertive, how to communicate things in a way that it can be received and not elicit defensiveness and how to get into their window of tolerance. Um, also, some guys are, uh, you know, they'll, they'll use drugs to cope with their anxiety or social anxiety or social inadequacy. Um, and what we'll start to do with them is actually ask them in, to turn into their experience of anxiety instead of running away from it and avoiding it. So if they go over to somebody's house and they find themselves being anxious instead of then scrambling to reach for nicotine, alcohol, or other drugs, that they actually honor themselves and just identify and acknowledge that, hey, you know, right now I'm, I'm feeling kind of anxious. My mouth is dry. My stomach is tightened up. I'm kind of, um, you know, second guessing how I interact with the people around me. And that's what my experience is. And we're asking them to honor that, learn about that, and then bring that to the therapy session so that we can help them to find healthier ways of coping versus just suppressing and stuffing and then using drugs and alcohol to stuff and suppress or just overreacting and acting out in aggressive or mean ways. So there was a study done, I just thought I'd include this in this course because I think it illustrates again the point of examining the relationship that you have with your child and how empowering that can be to make a difference. It's not looking at this as, 
I've failed my child or I did wrong or that sort of thing. It's just looking at where can I improve upon things to help support my child in their psychological growth and development. So in a, uh, several different studies, they've taken rhesus monkeys and they've um, genetically bred some of the monkeys so that they uh, produce these offspring monkeys, baby monkeys that were anxious and clingy genetically bred them to be that way and then they've taken other monkeys where they were able to manipulate their serotonin levels in the brain to kind of make a crazy baby monkey as well and what they found was is that when they put the babies these crazy baby monkeys with a crazy parent monkey the crazy baby monkey would get worse or in some cases die when they put the crazy baby monkey with the normal parent monkey what they found was that parent, normal parent monkey, went crazy as well. <laughs> if you think about what you're dealing with right now, you might be a normal parent dealing with a real struggling young person, and that's hard on you. You know, it, it makes Reese's monkey parents go crazy. <laughs> so it's hard on you. You need support too. When they've taken Reese's monkeys, the crazy baby monkeys, and put them with super nurturing parent monkeys, what they found was that those uh, crazy baby monkeys would actually get better. Um, and then finally, what they found in more recent research is that crazy baby monkey that got better then became a parent that parented the same way in that super nurturing stance with, with its offspring. So how, how we relate to our child and parent them uh, right now in the here and the now can affect them in their development. We've been talking about that um, all the way through. Um, and also, you're affected by what they're going through and you need support as well. And then finally, as I mentioned, um, the way you parent them will ultimately be the way that they parent their child. Nature's call response, and this is what I think we're kind of competing with, is that, you know, there's this call response where an infant cries out and caregivers respond and soothe to help regulate the, 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 the person, the child, um, in the beginning. And now, somewhere along the way, uh, we have uh, this teenager or young adult who's kind of crying out and the drugs are responding, the drug dealers responding, and drug culture is responding. Now they might not have cried out to us, but they've cried out to the drug culture, um, the drugs, and the, the other drug users, and then get their emotional uh, states regulated by those people and by the drugs. And what we're trying to do is teach them to turn to healthy people, to turn back to you as parents, to turn to their group members if they're in group counseling, their counselor or 12-step meetings if they're a part of that, to start to turn to healthier relationships. When they have that experience, as I said earlier, of feeling felt that my mom gets me, my dad gets me, they will start to trust again that they can turn to you um, for support. When they have the experience that the counselor gets them or their group members get them, they will take the risk to share more truth and get support, make themselves more vulnerable and get support. In the absence of that, again, their drug buddies, their drugs, their drug dealers um, will get them. They will have the, and then they will have that reinforcing experience to turn to the drug dealers and drug culture because, um, you know, they have that experience of, hey, my drug buddies get me. No one else understands me, but my drug buddies. And that, that is what we're c competing with, we're, and we have to work hard to compete with that. We have to work on creating the experience for the drug user that we do get them. We understand what their struggles are and how hard this is for them, and that we honor the choices and the changes that they have made so far, even though that there's still a long way to go. We certainly hold them accountable with drug testing and the boundaries in the home, but in the space of those boundaries, uh, we have to, they have to have access to us to support them emotionally. So we want them to have the experience of feeling felt, and uh, that's what we're trying to do in therapy, group meetings, 12-step meetings. You know, in the eighth tradition of the 12-step program, they, there's a, a line in there that says one addict um, helping another addict is without parallel. That and, and, and why is it powerful? There's the experience of feeling felt. Um, so anyway, that's what we're trying to work on and want to help you to understand that 
um, if you're able to work on that through getting support for yourself as well, that it kind of helps us um, to help your child. As stated, we're competing with a relationship to intoxication, dealers and drug culture. We're working on inviting them into a safe relationship where they can feel felt and then take the risk to explore themselves, to make themselves vulnerable and grow into a deeper relationship to themselves and others. This is a difficult time in their life and I think that's one of the takeaway messages we have to have is to understand that they're struggling and so that we can um, uh, look at them in that way versus looking at them with resentment, anger, frustration, and powerlessness. This is something that we actually can work on and have power over is our relationship uh, with them. That concludes this section.